We've done a fair amount of work on equations now, but now we move on to this new section called inequalities, or as some mathematicians like to call them, in equations. Okay, so first of all, we need to just refresh our memory. What is an inequality? An inequality is essentially something that is not equal, okay? But in our instance, we're very interested because it generally shows us whether something is greater than or smaller than. And so that is a very helpful thing to know. So if we have a look at this number line here, this is the kind of thing we would have been introduced to somewhere in the younger grades that we've been through, okay? So what we can see is that this blue line is defined between minus two and three, and then we've got two little bits of notation here. Okay, so let's say this number line is representing x, Okay, and so what we can say is that x is somewhere between minus 2 and 3. Okay, x is bigger than minus 2 because this is the bigger direction. Okay, and remember the little mouth of the inequality sign always points to the bigger thing. Okay, and then x is smaller than 3 because it's on this side, the left hand side of 3. So the mouth will point at 3 because 3 is bigger than x. Okay. And then we've got a closed circle, which means minus 2 may be included. So that means all equal to. And then on this side, we've got an open circle, which means 3 is not included. And so that is essentially what an inequality is telling us, is that x, or whatever value we're working with, fits between two ranges. Okay, and then we have this other thing known as interval notation, where you can actually take this exact same thing, and you just write it in a slightly different way. So you can say this exact same thing. X is an element. And now it fits between minus 2 and 3. And what we've seen is that minus 2 is included. So that's a square bracket. And 3 is not included. So that would be a round bracket. Okay, this is, these are two different notations to say exactly the same thing. And generally, either one of those is acceptable. But it is so helpful to know how to read both of them because you never know how your information will be represented in a test. Now let's shift our attention to quadratic inequalities. Okay, so the previous one we looked at, that was a linear inequality. We could even see it. It was on a straight line. But here at grade 11 level, we want to know how to deal with quadratic inequalities. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just sketched the parabola um, y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, and what I need to be able to understand is how this would link to an inequality notation. So the first thing we need to know is that when we talk about values that are above the x-axis, we're talking about positive values. Okay, because functions are always expressed as y's. So where is y positive? Yeah, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. It keeps on getting bigger in the positive direction. Okay, and in a similar way, everything underneath that x-axis is going to be negative. Okay, and so if we understand that, that helps us so much to understand inequality signs. Because here, if y is greater than or equal to 0, then it features somewhere above the line. And if y is smaller than or equal to 0, it features either equal to the line or below the line. Okay, and so that's how we need to be, begin to read these um, quadratic expressions. We need to read them as functions. Okay, so all the algebra we've been doing links so much to all the functions that we learned. Okay, we've learned about last year, we'll learn about them even more this year. But we need to understand this essential concept. When I'm given an inequality and asked to solve for something greater than or equal to zero, I want everything that's equal to the line or above it. And when I'm given something less than or equal to zero, I want the values below the line. Okay, and if you know that, then you're ready to dive into some very practical and actually super straightforward examples. So here we are asked to solve the following inequality. Okay, so first things first, we notice that this is not an equation. Okay, so I can't just solve it like I would an equation, but the beginning steps are quite similar. Okay, so the first thing I do is I want all of the terms on the one side and I want zero on the other side because this helps me to almost picture it as a 
quadratic function, a parabola. Okay, and this is helping me to see it's greater than, so I want the part above the line. See, I'm already going into inequality mo mode. I'm picturing those parabolas. Everything's going to come together. Okay, but before I can actually get to understanding what the parabola is going to look like, I need to factorize this. Okay, and this is a nice straightforward one. I can take out a common factor of x, and I'm left with x minus 1. Okay, but now because this is greater than or equal to 0, I can't just say, well, x equals 0 or x equals minus 1. This is actually a separate step that I need to do. So I need to go from here, and I need to say, okay, I don't know the answers necessarily to this uh, inequality, but I do know the, there are points here which we call critical values. Okay, and so critical values is when you take an inequality and you just solve those points as if they were equation points. Okay, so x equals 0 and x equals 1. Okay, why do we want this? We want this because we want to be able to draw some sort of parabola. Okay, so we've got two x values, 0 and 1. And then the other thing which I always encourage my students to do is to check before you factorize, check that you're dealing with a positive x squared term. Because if you remember back to your parabola days, if x squared was a positive term, or if the coefficient of x squared was positive, then you would always have a happy parabola, okay, or um, a more mathematical term. This was called a minimum value parabola. Okay, so if we've got that, we can then interpret our answer quite nicely. Okay, so this is going to have intercepts at 0 and at 1. And now I need to understand which parts of this parabola are they interested in as an answer. Okay, so have a look with me. This sign is greater than or equal to 0. So the greater than or equal to was always above the line. Okay, now you are welcome to plot in a y-axis here, but it's not necessary. You can actually figure this out just by looking at the graph with the x-axis. I am interested in the part that is greater than or equal to zero. So this part and this part. Do you see how that's two separate sections of my graph? Okay, and then they want the answer in terms of x. So now I've interpreted the y-values but I need to put my answer in terms of x, okay? So if you look at this arrow here, it's showing that we want everything on this side, okay? It's gonna keep going. Yes, it's getting more um, taller in terms of y values, but it is also going more towards the negative side, okay? So if you go all the way to down here, you end up at minus infinity, and if you go all the way up here, you end up at positive infinity, okay? And so because I want those two sections that are above the line, what I'm essentially saying is I want everything that's between 0 and minus infinity, and I want everything that's between 1 and positive infinity. That is where my answer will be represented. And so now I can simply write that, and I can say from minus infinity, x is between that and 0. Okay, I'm going to put my signs in. Or, because it's in two separate places, between 1 and infinity, and I'm going to put my signs in. And now I need to think carefully about whether or not I'm allowed to allocate an equals sign. Okay. Minus infinity, because we don't know what it is, it's, it's a concept, but we don't actually know what it's equal to, nothing can ever equal that. So I can't add an equal sign there. And then zero, because it was allowed to equal zero, we are allowed to equal zero here. Okay. In the same way, it's allowed to equal one, but it cannot equal infinity. All right, so there is the answer to this inequality. You could also write this as, um, as an interval notation. So you can say x is an element, and then you can say from minus infinity up to zero. Remember, things that are not included get a round bracket. Things that are included get a square bracket. Okay, or x is an element from one to infinity. Infinity round bracket, one a square bracket. Okay, so what did we do? We factorized, we got critical values. Those helped us to plot intercepts so that we could draw the parabola. Hot tip, make sure that your x squared has a positive coefficient because it definitely makes drawing the parabola easier. 
And once we had done that, we simply interpreted that we wanted the part above the axis there. Here is another one for us to try. 2x plus 3 is greater than x squared. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to get it in standard form where 0 is equal to everything else. Okay, now at first glance it seems easy enough to move this x squared over. But if I do that, I've got a couple of problems. I've got the fact that that's going to be a minus x squared, which is okay because I'll just have to remember to draw a sad um, parabola when I get to that part. But the other thing is I might need, in order to factorize it, I might need to divide. And remember when we divide by a minus, we have to change this direction of the inequality sign. Do you remember that from grade 10? So for me, it's going to make more sense to keep this x squared positive and to rather focus on moving the other terms across. Okay, it's not wrong if you do it in a different order. You're just going to involve more steps. Okay, so 0 is greater than x squared minus 2x once we move it over minus 3. Okay, so I'm allowed to move things over and they become negative. But it's when I divide or multiply by a negative that I have to change the inequality, the direction of that inequality sign. Okay, once I've done that, my next step is to factorize. So 0 is greater than, and now I've got my brackets, x times x gives me x squared, 3 times 1 gives me 3, and how can I use a 3 and a 1 to make this middle term here of minus 2? I'm going to say minus 3 plus 1, and then I do a final check, minus times a plus is a minus, and 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, so it's at this point where I now have to break away. I can't just solve, but I can get to a point where I can solve for those critical values. Okay, values. Right, so those critical values tell me that if x is equal to 3 or x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so I am now ready to draw the parabola. I've made sure that it's going to be a happy one because I made sure that x squared stayed positive. And in this instance, my x values are minus 1 and 3. Okay, now which side of this um, parabola do I want? Do I want the positive side, which is up here, positive? Or do I want the negative side, which is down here? Okay, well, I need to look at where my inequality sign is pointing. So have a look here. 0 is bigger than my inequality, which means I want the negative section. Okay, and so that one is always quite easy to do because it's all joined. It's here between minus 1 and 3. All of that is below the line. So that's a negative answer there for us. Okay, how do we write it? Well, minus 1, x is somewhere between minus 1 and 3. And our inequality signs face that way because x is bigger than minus 1, but x is smaller than 3. And then I check, am I allowed to make anything equal? Okay, I'm not dealing with infinity, so that's not something that I need to consider. But I wasn't given an equal sign here to begin with, and so I can't come and put one in here. Okay, and in a similar way, if I wanted to give the answer in interval notation, I can say x is an element minus 1 and 3. And neither of those is included, so they both get round brackets. Let's take a look at one last example, and this one is one that they like to try and trick us with. But we are going to be alert. Okay, so solve the following inequality, and we are given this fraction here. And what we are so tempted to do is just multiply both sides by this denominator so that it goes away. Okay, but if we do that, we'll actually be losing part of our solution. And we don't know, we, we don't know what this x value is. So if I multiply and this happens to be a negative, then I have to change the sign. Okay, and so th that's a risk if we do that. Okay, and so there are a couple of options that you can do. You can just remember to interpret this in terms of both of these factors or what is always a safe bet is you can actually multiply by that denominator squared okay because anything squared is 
positive, right? Even a minus times a minus becomes a positive. And so by doing that, what you are actually saying is that this sign can definitely stay facing the direction it's in, and I'm not going to throw away any solutions. So let's have a look at what's going to happen if we do that method. So we're going to say x minus 1 uh, over x plus 2. And now I'm saying we want to multiply that by x plus 2 squared. Okay, it's greater than or equal to 0 times x plus 2 squared. That is just going to stay 0 on that side. Okay, on this side, because we've got so many of these, we can now actually cancel. And then let's look at what's left. We've got x minus 1 and x plus 2 as our two brackets. Okay, and I'm not even going to go through the effort of multiplying them out because they're already factorized for me, which means I'm ready to jump to that critical values step. So critical values over here on the side are going to be x is going to equal minus 2 or x is going to equal positive 1. And then I'm ready to draw a parabola, okay? In this instance, I just do a check. If I multiply x times x, that gives me x squared, which is positive, so it's going to be a happy parabola. Okay, and my intercepts here were minus 2 and 1. And now I need to look carefully at which parts of the parabola I'm interested in. Okay, so where is x? x is on the bigger side, okay? Bigger than zero means everything above the line, so I want those two parts, okay? For me, it's very helpful to look at it and say, well, there's minus infinity all the way down there. There's infinity all the way up there, because what I want is I want everything here and everything here. All of these x values, if I substitute them into the graph, will end up with a positive y. And the same thing here. Every x value here, if I substitute it into my equation, I'll end up with a positive y. Okay, how do we write it? Let's see, minus infinity, x is somewhere between minus infinity and minus 2. Okay, there are my signs. Okay, minus infinity is never allowed to be equal, but because the question had an equal sign here, minus 2 is. Okay, or because it's two separate sections, it's between 1 and infinity, okay, and 1 is allowed to be equal, but infinity is not. So there we have a tricky question, but if you remember that you are allowed to multiply by the denominator squared, then you can solve it and still come to a good quadratic answer, okay? Or remember that we don't want to just multiply by this and throw away one of our solutions, so you could have taken both of these options straight away and use your critical values.